Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm doing a playthrough of the solo mode in Creature Caravan, the latest from Red Raven Games. And disclaimer that I got a review copy of this one. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast for reviews and design discussions, or join the conversation and come say hi on our Discord. So Creature Caravan is a very quick playing Euro with a dice placement system and kind of tableau building. You're trying to earn the most victory points possible over the course of 12 rounds, which in competitive are played simultaneously between the players and are very fast. You'll be moving your little caravan along this map, stopping at different places and getting attacked by zombies along the way. That's what these little uh, O's and X's represent. With the main action of the turn being handled by rolling five dice, you can re-roll once, and then placing them both on action spaces on your board and also on cards you've played. Cards looking like these, there's just a ton of them, each unique. Each one has a cost in the upper left, a potential victory point value on the left here, although often you won't get it unless you have a certain mix of keywords in your played cards or places that your caravan has moved to throughout the game. And they'll either give you ongoing bonuses or ways to use your dice. You'll also be fighting zombies to earn victory points. The higher the combat total you can get to, the bigger the victory points. Same thing with making trades with these purple goods and with coins, which will also earn you a lot of food making these trades, which is the main resource you use to play characters. So let's get right to it and just walk through the game. It's not that complicated, and we'll see how we do at Creature Caravan. All right, so I start with one coin and eight cards, and I'm rolling five dice. Let's just go ahead and do that first. So you start your turn by rolling five dice. You can do a single re-roll, but it has to be of all your dice. And in this game, higher values are strictly better. <laughs> There's no, like, mitigation where, like, ones are more useful for some things. I'll say that's, that's actually a pretty solid roll, so we'll stick with that. And now I can place my dice on action, so let's talk through the basic ones that you always have on your player board. First of all, these are just conversions you can do with your basic card. So if I need some more bread, some more food to play somebody, or if I want some more coins to make a trade, I can just discard one or three cards from my hand to get those. This is a combat space, and you'll notice that it's blank because this is the only type of space where the actual die value you place matters. So like this would give me six combat, and that would give me one. Whenever you move on to a zombie space, these are like ember zombies, fire zombies. I'm not 100% sure of what the, is going on with the theme here. But whenever you move on to a space with an O and an X, you get a little zombie token on your board. They sent me the deluxe tokens, by the way, which are nice chunky wood. But in the regular retail version, it's just uh, cardboard. But yeah, whenever you move on to a zombie space, you get a little ember zombie. These are worth minus one victory points at the end of the game. But while you're on a zombie space that you have not yet camped at, that you haven't ended your turn on, you can then use combat dice to fight zombies. It'll get you victory points, and you also get rid of one zombie when you successfully fight. Then there's a trade action. You need a two or higher. Again, all of these high dice are better. You can use any uh, higher value or the exact value shown to take the action. So when you trade at the market, you pick one of the open trades you haven't done yet, and you mark it with a cube, so you can't do the same trade again. You have to do a different value. You can trade in one or more coins or one or more bags. Whatever trade you do, you take the value you traded in of that resource and get two more breads. So like if I traded in three bags, I would get five bread. And at the end of the game, you're going to get the indicated victory points. And you also eventually lock other players out. And in the solo mode, the bot can lock you out. Because what happens is at the end of each turn, at the end of each round, these are going to go down one. And at the end of the second round, after you have placed your cube here, it'll go onto the space itself. And that locks other players from going in. But if before that point they get in there, then you can both coexist and get the victory points. Those were the complicated actions. The rest are pretty straightforward. Uh, for a one or higher, you can draw a single card from the deck, which then becomes something you can play or something you can discard for bread or coins. For a five or higher, you can draw three cards and keep one. That's what it means whenever you see the, uh, the card symbol with the hand there. For four, you can get a single bag. For five, you can get two bread. And then very important ones for moving your caravan initially. With a three, you can move onto planes. All movement is orthogonal, unless you have a power that lets you move diagonally. And you're always looking at the place you're moving to, not where you're moving from. So like this plane's movement would let me move up or down or right to there. You can move up or down in your column. You can move to the right. You can never move backwards. You're always progressing toward the city at the far end of the combined boards. And you are getting one victory point for every space you progress to the right. So it always makes sense to keep moving. Besides plains, there are mountains, there are hills, and there's water, and you need different symbols to move on to each of those. 
But if you spend two dice, this is the only action that costs two dice of any value, one or higher, then you can move on to any type of terrain. I already said when you move on to zombie spaces, you take a zombie token and you can fight while you're there. But there's also things that reward you for ending on their spaces. If you end on fruit spaces, you get a fruit token that can upgrade your cards, make them easier to use. If you end on one of these white towers, you get to draw three cards at the end of the turn. If you end on one of these little treasure chest ones, you get a treasure chest token that'll give you end game victory points and often resources. And then you'll also see clouds. Those just count as planes for movement, but some cards will refer to them uh, like these little victory point things. Like it might say, hey, if you have three camps on clouds, this card is worth eight victory points. And you'll see that kind of stuff a lot. Things that care about where you leave your camps. Camps are dropped at the end of each turn, wherever you have your caravan. And you also get one point for each unique space you have caravans in at the end of the game. So you can drop multiple camps if you just don't move, but it's usually in your best interest to try to progress at least a little bit every single round. All right, that's basically the whole game. So let's look at our cards. Usually you're going to discard a bunch of these to get enough bread to actually play others. So I'm really looking for combos and which ones I care to keep. So they do have keywords, as I mentioned. They have a flavor text name. They got the cost up here, actions here. All right, so the insect catcher can get me consistent bread. And I do have a coin, so that one's not too hard to play. I mean, I can already get two bread for a die, but there's a three instead of a five. And then if, including himself, I get four cards that are tinies worth eight victory points. I've got this ancient imp crawler that costs seven or zero if I have the aged engineer, but the bot actually started with the aged engineer and another machine. <laughs> so he's going to be like kind of digging for machines, which means they might be less useful to me because this one's worth two per machine. I'm glad uh, the bot didn't get this. Yeah, there's an ancient imp crawler for a four or higher. I can move on to a plane or onto a mountain. Okay. Scaled Stallion has a ton of keywords, one per magic. Wow, for a three, I could move twice on planes, and it would let me attack with a plus one bonus whatever die I put here, but geez, it costs a lot. That's a pretty amazing, like, mid to late game card. Okay, another friggin' machine combo. <laughs> it's worth one victory point. If you have two plus machines, each turn you get a free... Wow, a free hill or plane movement. But uh, they're folk themselves, so I would need two machines separate from them. Okay, the giant pelican, it's four, and four more if I have any fish folk, which I don't yet. Uh, when you camp on a cloud space, you get to draw a card, and they can move onto mountains or plains. Interesting. Oh, here's a cheap machine. Interesting. Where was that other guy? Maybe I should go machines. Uh, <laughs> it only costs two food, and for a three, you can move you onto plane. Pretty dang nice, and it's two victory points. Fish folk thief costs five food and is actually minus one, but wow, they can get you a coin every turn. Coins let you make those trades, and it gets you a ton of victory points and also a lot of extra bread, so it's actually not too bad, even though it uh, costs negative victory points. Another machine, pretty expensive though, a canyon wagon uh, could move me again, so I could just like move a ton. Yeah, so honestly, even though the bot is going to be competing over it, I kind of see... A nice, like, machine combo here. Maybe not that one. That's super expensive. Uh, do I have two? Yeah, th okay, so these are, like, all reasonably priced. And if I get all three of them out at a cost of 11 food, that's the same as, like, just the horse. <laughs> that, and maybe, like, the thief. Okay, so these are kind of the cards I'm gravitating towards, which means I'm going to treat these other four as just fodder to get stuff down. So probably the most useful one off the bat. Oh, wait, where was that one that, like, got me two more food? Okay. Well, either way, let's uh, let's do a five to get two food, so I can actually maybe start paying these. Maybe I should make a trade for one coin before that's uh, out of the question. Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'll trade at the market for a one coin trade. So that's going to lock in two victory points for me, and I immediately get, not when it gets to the bottom, but immediately I get one plus two, three more food. All right. All right. And then so I could play the fish folk thief now and start building up coins to get me more food to allow the play of these. Or I could try to get like this combo going earlier. I would need to get a bag to play the uh, canyon wagon. But yeah, if I get all three of these out, I'll basically have all the movement I need in the world. So then it's really just about a bread engine, which the fish folk thief provides better because he can get me those coin trades, which makes me think the thief is the best one to go for first, right? because he's going to allow the playing of these through those coins. So let's get him out for five. And that's a free action, by the way. You can play cards uh, whenever you want on your turn. Okay, and then unfortunately I only have, yeah, not having a four here kind of sucks. So I put the six here to get a bread back and another coin. And coins are usually super expensive to get. So just to make sure for context, this is a very powerful ability, getting that coin so easily. Now, do I care about playing any of these like in the short term? 
Not really, right? Because he'll only uh, benefit me once I have a bunch of things. Um, I'm going to move with just like a regular plane move right now. So yeah, all right, let's uh, let's do a regular planes move. I don't want to be on the zombie yet because I don't have any dice to fight it, but being right next to it and the fruit. I didn't really explain fruit too well. What happens is you keep the fruit on your board, and whenever you want to, you can permanently put it on a card and change the actions on that card to be a one or higher instead of whatever they say. So I could like make my thief incredibly easy to trigger with any die, which might actually be a good thing I want to do. And then I've got just a one left. Yeah, not much to do there except draw a card, which even if it doesn't work for my combo will be like getting one bread. Oh, I got another machine. What is going on here? Uh, dang it. Plus two victory points if the agent engineer is out. Again, they got him. Uh, each turn, you may raise two dice by one. And he's really inexpensive. So I could get that. Uh, yeah, I mean, look at this. Just eight food would get me Sturdy Wagon, Work Crew, and Rusty Robot, giving me a lot of dice mitigation and a bunch of free movement. That seems great. But anyway, I'm going to stop my turn. So I put a tent down where I am. And that's how I would get bonuses like the fruit and the treasure chest and the towers for three card draw, wherever you put your uh, camp. But here it does nothing for me. Now let's talk about the solo bot. Uh, technically, in a multiplayer game, you would be resolving their turn at the same time as yours. Uh, here you can just do them kind of one after the other. So they start with two cards that combo together. The rule book gives you like four or five combos you can try. This is like kind of the easiest one they suggest. Again, it kind of sucks that uh, <laughs> it's totally going for machines and might steal from me. Although I, I don't feel like I'm going for like all machines, right? I just want to get that like three card combo and move really fast. Okay, so what you do is you roll five dice. And then you are looking for certain combos and you just go from top to bottom. So first it says, do they have a pair of fours, fives or sixes, a double of the same? And they do not. If they did, they would do a trade. Okay. They would take the lowest of these that they hadn't done yet. That wasn't blocked out by me. Then they look if they have a pair of ones. They do not. Then they look if they have at least one, two, they do. And they're going to move one forward and one down which means they've come to join me. And they don't get uh, zombies from going on here. They get zombies in another way. There really is no direct player interaction or competition in the game, except for putting those cubes down on the boards and blocking people out. And there is a variant role where you can trade stuff with other players, but I haven't played with that. Okay, so we got the two, then a three. They didn't get a three, but they would have uh, drawn cards to try to complete one of their victory point things. Right now, they have Trinket Wagon wants four plus machines for nine victory points. So they would basically dig through up to six cards to try to find the first machine they could. Okay, the four says roll all combat dice and add them together. These are dice that are left over. So at the end of the turn, like the one and the two this time are going to be up here and they'll roll five new dice. So it says roll all combat dice and add together. Add one per attack action on bots played cards. So if they had cards that could attack. If six plus, defeat lowest available enemy. If less than six, gain a zombie. So here, since they don't have any combat dice, they're going to get a zombie. That's minus one victory point. I like that. But next time they'll have two combat dice, so their chance of getting six plus should be pretty easy. Uh, then the next one is six. They draw five and they keep the one with the highest victory point value, not worrying about what they need to get for it because they trust that that three thing is going to help them uh, find it anyway. All right, so what do we got? Uh, four. Four is the highest. And what does it actually need? Plus four if grass kin queen. So they might like dig for the grass queen queen, but all the rest of these get discarded. By the way, for the player, there is a max of 12 cards. I didn't see the solo bot saying, although it does say they like follow the same rules. So that might apply to them as well. Okay, so any leftover dice go to the combat board for next turn, but they will always roll five. So that doesn't like take away two of their dice. They'll have five more dice at the beginning of the next turn. Okay, ready to go. Bot uh, turns are pretty quick. Oh, sorry, I should put down their tent. Bots only care about fruit and treasure chests, not zombie spaces, not towers. And they just collect them basically as something that will give them victory points at the end of the game. Oh, can't forget this. At the end of each round, this pops down one. So I will block the AI out again in that one. Although they always take the lowest valued one. So me blocking them out will just kind of push them to higher values later on in the game. So who knows? That's a good thing. All right, here we go. Um, I'll reroll that. <laughs> Two ones and nothing higher than a four. Seems pretty bad to me. Okay, that's definitely better. All right. Uh, so do do do. I want to move on there and kill a zombie, I think. And then get the fruit to maybe like make my thief easier to use. And I think I might also get this rusty robot out. And uh, these each turn abilities you can use at any point during your turn. So even like after I play them, I could make my dice better. So let's uh, let's go ahead and use a six, I guess, to get a food. Actually, well, let's not do that. Let's not hold on. Because I know I have cards I don't care about, right? Let's discard. Uh, oh, I didn't realize that guy was a machine too. Let's discard this flying pelican. I don't think I'm going to care about him. 
mean, I did see this thing is two victory points per machine, so maybe I do want to play that eventually. But I discarded the Pelican for a food so that I could pay two food to uh, play the Rusty Robot. Sorry, let's go over here so you can see like my full stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and use him to raise two dice by one. Let's raise this one to two. It'll make like a market action maybe. And this three to a four to do the fish folk thief. Okay, now let's get a food and a coin. And I couldn't wait to make the trade, but ah, what the heck. Let's go ahead and trade at the market. And we'll do the two coin trade this time, which is going to get us three victory points eventually and four food immediately. And I think I should be able to get my machine combo going like now, right? That's only six food. Yeah, so let's discard uh, the this uh, tiny insect guy. That'll get us to six food, and then we'll play out that and that, which means I have two... Oh, I don't want... Oh, no, I do want to move. If you have two plus machines each turn, I can move onto planes or uh, hills. So I'm going to move here. I do immediately get a zombie for entering a OX base, but I can fight here, which would get rid of the zombie. And I can only fight before I put a tent down. So if I end my turn there, then I can't fight anymore. All right, so let's do a six to attack. And whatever your combat total is from the dice you have actually placed on attack actions is the max you can place it on. So I'm going to cover the six here to get two victory points and I get rid of the zombie. You don't get anything else like bread or whatever. And this is not telling me a bonus I get. That's just reminding me that if I... Uh, camp on a white tower i get three cards i know i could move some more with these but i don't think i want to i do need a bag right to like play that guy if i want to get him out because he would give me yeah if i get these out then i have like every type of terrain covered and i'm getting a ton of victory points for that so let's uh let's get uh let's get the bag since that's something i definitely need those we can also make trades with but as you saw they are also sometimes needed by cards and then I guess, um, I don't want to move because I want to get the fruit, so I guess I'll just draw a card. And I got a Desert Bandit. Minus one victory point, like the, uh, the Fish Folk Thief. Oh, wait a second, Fish Folk. Wasn't there somebody who liked Fish Folk? Oh, I got rid of it. Yeah, the Giant Pelican would have been an eight if I had any Fish Folk. Whoops. Uh, well, too late. Wait, this guy can get me bags for a six. That'd be an amazing one to uh, <laughs> put a fruit on. And can let me place another die for combat, so I could put, like, two sixes down to get a 12. And it would give me plus one when I did that uh, per deadly card I had. Oh, which is not him. He is not deadly. That's interesting. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think that's... It. Oh, no, I have... No, no, that is my last die. Okay, so I'm done. I'm going to camp here, get my first fruit. And the zombies do not do anything except on entering a space. So, like, staying here even for multiple rounds would not cause me to get more ember zombies. All right. And we roll five dice, not uh, counting the combat dice. Oh, they did get... A pair of fours, of fives, or sixes, so they complete the lowest available trade. I'm not sure if lowest available means furthest left or lowest victory point value. I'm going to assume it means victory point value and put them here. They could have gone here, though, but after this round, they will not be able to. They'll be locked out. All right, so they'll lock me out of there pretty soon if I don't jump in, although it's one victory point, so I don't necessarily care. Okay, they don't have a pair of ones, but they do have this to move one forward and one down. So they're going to end up there. And then they didn't attack yet, so it's going to keep on building up combat dice, I guess. And then they draw five. Oh, that's right. And keep one with the highest victory point value. This time it's oh, clearly that nine. If they camp on three plus white towers. I don't know how the AI is going to figure out to do that, so <laughs> it probably won't happen. I'll note, by the way, that I don't care much about what the solo bot is doing, because, again, there's no direct competition except for that uh, market board and the zombies. So, yeah, they, they can do whatever they like. But I feel great about my combo so far. I have some dice mitigation. I have a fruit to put out. I'm getting some free movement. Let's see what we can do. Oh, that was a good roll. Let's definitely keep that. All right, so hmm, at the moment, there's a mountain right in front of me if I just want to like take the most direct approach, which means I would love to get this ancient imp crawler so I don't have to spend two dice. Although I guess if I go to the mountain, well, then I could go down here, maybe fight a zombie again for the five value, then maybe try to get a treasure chest. Or I could try to get the less expensive canyon wagon out and go like up into the right where the river is. Yeah, that would only need five food. Although where do I get five food? I need the bag if I'm going to play him. I can't get enough coins to do that. All right, what if I use my raise two dice thing to make this? I oh, know, let me make this into a two and this into a four. That was my rusty robot. And then let's get another bag. So I can trade that in for four food or just one of them for three, which would almost... Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to do a trade for a single bag. Oh, sorry, I forgot to move these down. So before the bot has blocked me entirely, once every player is on there, you can just move it down right away. It doesn't really matter. Okay, that's got me three food. So I still need two more. Well, let's get rid of the two people who are not machines, I guess, for now. So that'll get me 
all the food, two more food I need, and the bag is already there to play the canyon wagon. Ooh, he lets me draw a card too. All right, let's uh, use my work crew to move onto plains or hills. Go up onto a zombie. Whoops. And then I just need a five to kill the one zombie I can afford. So at this point, zombies will not work for me anymore. Uh, will not be defeated by me unless I can get a second card like that guy I just threw away. Okay, and I got um, five and a six left. I think I might want to do the thief to keep getting coins to make more trades later. Although I have already played five out of my 12 cards, so <laughs> I'm going to have to slow down a little bit. But everybody gets me some amount of extra points except him right now. And once I play the Ancient Imp Crawler, it's going to be worth two, four, six, eight victory points. That's great. But yeah, I think I'm going to do the Canyon Wagon to move on to the uh, water next to me and get a card. Oh, it's a f almost free Raven. Turn start. Draw one card, then discard one card from your hand. Meh. I don't know if I want that taking up a space uh, out of my 12, but I do get to go here, so not quite to the fruit. Now, this really is the question. Do I want to do that this turn, or do I just want to move again with my last remaining die, which would get me onto a fruit and just, like, really fast-track me to going farther on the board? Ah, we'll, we'll do the coins later. <laughs> I'm not in a hurry to play more cards. Just to pause for a second to talk about how victory points are calculated. So in terms of how far you move, there's six spaces per board and there's four boards. So there's 24 columns to move through. And then Eastry, the uh, city, counts as the 25th. So you can get a max of 25 victory points. You get one for every column you move over and another five if you reach Eastry. So if I just like hoof it, I'm getting 30 victory points for sure there. You get one point for every space that has a camp in it that is different. So if I'm moving a lot, that'll also happen and get me 12 more because it's uh, 12 rounds. I forget if I said that. I'm fighting zombies. I'm making market trades, card victory points, treasures, and then minus one for each ember zombie. So you've really seen every source of victory points already in the game. So yeah, let's uh, let's go here. Getting more fruits doesn't actually get me more victory points, but it will make you know my engine and like bad luck rolling not matter as much. Although I have that robot to make my rolls not matter much either. So maybe this is a bad idea. Okay, so I'm stopping there. Um, I get a second fruit, and I can just hold on to those until I need to use them to play the cards I want to play. All right, let's see how robot over here is gonna do. Oh, they got another pair. So they're gonna log it on the lowest space again. I'm assuming that means victory points. They can't go to the one that I locked them out of, so they're gonna go on the bag. And they still don't get a pair of ones. They're going to move one forward, one down. Onto a white plate. Oh, I forgot to put a camp there. But yeah, onto the white tower, which is not going to do anything for him. Oh, actually, I'm lying. Hey, that's one out of three for the aged mystic to uh, give them a bunch of points. They really got like an aged team, don't they? Or aged? Should I say aged? That sounds like a uh, drink. Oh, they're doing their combat dice. So they roll all of them. They have to get a six or higher. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't imagine they wouldn't. That zombie is a permanent thing, though. It's kind of like they stopped on a zombie space but couldn't defeat it. Uh, so they are... Which one do they defeat? Lowest available. So they're going on the same five one. That does mean that I'm going to lock them out of the second. They'll just jump to the third next time they fight. But they're back down to one combat die next time. So fairly low odds they would actually beat the zombies if they battle. All right. All right. And that's now locked. That's now locked. Oh, I guess that one's already good. All right. So we're going into round four. You can see the game uh, goes at a pretty good clip. Ooh, that was a nice roll. Um, geez, that <laughs> yeah, was a really nice roll. So I want to get to like the treasure chest. It's three ahead of me, ideally. That's a lot of moving. I want to get the fish folk thief going. I, I eventually want to play this guy, but I don't care necessarily immediately about that. So let's do my free planes movement. Gets me to here. Then let's do my canyon wagon for the hill movement and a card. See if it's anything good. Oh, another machine. Oh, and eight victory points and four plus machines. But gosh, I need a lot of food. So I definitely need to start getting my fish folk thief uh, doing his coin thing to get me more trades. Yeah, that gets me here. And then I just need to move one more. I got so many good dice. So sure, let's use a sturdy wagon. I guess I could have done the basic one too. So I'll give me a treasure chest in a second. And I'm just booking it. <laughs> this is definitely the fastest I've moved in the game. All right, I do want uh, bread and coin. Mainly the coin, uh, so I need to build up to three coins. I could discard three cards to get a coin, but that's not going to happen. Um, okay, hmm. what should I do? I guess getting two food might be the best in this case. I don't want to move any farther yet. And then I guess I don't want to do a trade. I can't do a trade right now because I don't have enough coins or bags, so I'll uh, get a card. Oh, it's another fighting person, or it can get me two cards. It costs nine, though. I think I have other things to prioritize buying right now. So that's it for my turn. Not necessarily a... Oh, I didn't even use the robot. <laughs> Not necessarily a super exciting. But I do get a treasure chest. There's a whole bunch of them. You just take one and see what it is. 
And it'll either give you just victory points or... I don't want more fruit, you stupid. <laughs> but it's one victory point. That's cool. And I guess with all this fruit, my die rolls are never going to be a problem. I can always activate anything I want to activate. It's kind of crazy. Kind of wish I was more like the AI, though, where they uh, can just get victory points for fruit. All right. That's a lot of high values. So they're definitely doing a trade. What's the lowest available, this bag one, for three victory points? Again, I might be doing that wrong. It might be leftmost. But they didn't say leftmost. They said lowest. They just didn't clarify what lowest meant. So I don't know. Now, they did also say, though, that coins break ties. So it's possible that if they meant, like, lowest, as in the lowest resources, that all of these should be on the coin side. I mean, it's like a difference of a victory point or two, although it would have maybe locked me out. No, I guess I would have been locking them out. I don't know. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay, they're going to try to fight. I like that. Um, doo -doo -doo. They would need a straight up six, and they didn't get it. If they had any characters that could give them combat bonuses, that would have worked. But they're just getting a zombie. Ha ha ha. They do get a fruit, though, which is just worth some amount of victory points. I forget how many. And that'll be a new combat die for them. Ooh, no new cards. That was a pretty bad turn. And they didn't move. Interesting. All right, so back to me. I want to try to... I mean, clearly I'm going to keep moving. I want to try to get some more food. That was a... Hmm. That's, that's a kind of middling roll right there. Let's try that again. Oh, uh, that's... Okay. <laughs> that's not super duper bad. It's also not super good, but yeah, we'll take it. I think I'm going to put one of my fruit on um, a fish folk guy, so any number corn for him. So that'll get me a, a coin and a food. Need one more coin to make an actual tray, but then that would get me five more food. Now, annoyingly, there's a mountain right in front of me. Hmm. So I want to get this guy. How many bread am I shy? Three. So I could do that and then discard one card. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Let's, uh, let's use our rusty robot to raise both of these to fives. I don't know if I need that. <laughs> then we'll get two more food. And I will discard the Raven to get the seventh. And then I'll get out this guy. That's going to be worth two victory points per machine. So that's just the gift that keeps on giving. And I will use a five to move on to the mountain. The boop. And I definitely don't care about fruit. <laughs> get out of here. But I also don't have any way to fight another zombie. So maybe I like go boop, 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 or at least start along that path. So sure, let's uh, move on to water and get a card. Oh my God, why is it always machines? Uh, one per camp on a lake. So that's zero victory points. Um, what is it? I get a coin for a three. One more coin if I have three plus giants, which I immediately would. Ooh, okay. So this guy's not too expensive. Although, again, he's not really worth any victory points, but getting two coins a turn or three with my thief is kind of insane. But anyway, I get here, and then I'll use my work crew for a free move down there. I want to get that treasure chest and just keep moving fast. Although I'm kind of moving too fast, because like if you get to the city, you just start camping on the city over and over, which is not really good for you. But it's fine. I'm going to... Oh, I only have two left. Hey, fruit. Because <laughs> you can't put fruit on your board for that uh, planes action. So yeah, I'll go there to move on to the treasure chest. And that's it for the round. But yeah, I want to get that guy out. If I make the three coin trade, that'll get me the five bread. And then I can just start hammering more coins anyway. Maybe move a little bit less next turn. And then I do want to get somebody who can fight more zombies at some point, I guess. All right, so I camp here. God help me if I get a fruit again. Ooh, another coin. I love that. Let me make a bigger trade for more victory points right off the bat. Awesome. Okay, body bot, what you up to? Uh, whoa. <laughs> oh, they actually got finally, so they didn't get a pair of four, five, sixes. So move two forward and two up, and then one forward and one down. So overall, they're moving three forward and one up. One, two, three, four. Wow. Yeah, I mean, they didn't catch up yet, but they definitely <laughs> booked it. And then they're trying to fight again. Um, okay. Ouch. Uh, so they just keep on doing this? Yeah, the rules are definitely not very clear. I assume the combat dice go away so they can just keep on having bad combats like this, but they definitely don't, like, say for sure. But it'd be crazy if it has had infinite combat dice. I don't know. The entire solo rules is, like, two pages that are kind of quickly laid out. All right, so they're just looking for the highest. Oh, what the? It's just a lot of ones. Uh, I guess one per two folk is best for them. I don't know how intelligent I'm supposed to be. They have our two folk already, so this is still worth more. Oh, wait, uh... Now, this only cares about the highest victory point value. Oh, if tied, you choose. Because I'd rather them not have the machine. What's the other? Here we go. I'll give them this one. Folk and magic. Because <laughs> I don't want to help them get four machines. Oh, and plus one per machine. Yeah, I wish I had uh, those cards for myself. That'd be amazing. All right. All right, so I want to get out coin robot boy, which means I need a bag. That was a good... Well, is that a good roll? Yeah, no, that's a good roll. Um... So let's uh, let's use my rusty robot. I'm gonna make one of these a six, make one of them a four, I guess. Whoops. All right, and I do want to get a bag to play that one guy. I want to make a trade, right? Um, yeah. So, or do I want to do the fish folk guy first? Well, sure. Let's keep on 
Doing fish folk. Now I can do a four coin trade in second. So let's do that. Oh, I totally forgot. These are definitely long gone. <laughs> so yeah, four coins. It gives me six victory points. It gets me six bread now. Okay, so boop. And then let's go ahead and play the ancient diver bot. So uh, he's five bread and my one bag. All right, and I guess I can put him over there. So he needs a three or higher. I didn't use these yet. He needs a three or higher to get me two coins. Friggin' great. <laughs> let's go ahead and do that now. It's two coins because I have at least uh, three giant cards. Okay, and I do need to get, like, another fighter out. Do I even want to move this turn? I mean, moving forward into zombies is going to get me a minus for moving into the zombies, but a plus for not being on the same space turn to turn and for moving closer to the tower. So let's at least use our free work crew move to go onto a zombie here, and, you know, so be it. And once you put a camp, you can't fight a zombie anymore, so there's going to be no way to get rid of that one. Let's see, I do still want to play some expensive things. Let's, let's get uh, two more bread, I think. All right, and that'll finish me up. I should, with, like, some more coin training, be able to get this guy out next turn and then, like, start killing some more zombies, I think. And I do want to get that before the end of the game, just mainly for the eight victory points. Okay, so that's round six. So we have six more rounds, and we are at the halfway point of the board, but I, clearly I am able to progress very quickly at this point, so I need to, like, kind of slow my roll, <laughs> try to grab some stuff as I go. All right, the AI. Oh, man. Oh, uh, they got... A four and a five, huh? Whoops, sorry, you can't even see that, can you? They got a pair of four and a pair of five. Which one do they pick? Uh, the rules don't tell me. Um, I, I feel like a bad person, but I'd rather them do fours so that they have a bad combat. So I'm going to use the fives <laughs> to do the lowest trade. Oh, and again, I always forget to move these down. Um, so yeah, they're definitely doing this one this time, right? Because they prefer tied coins. So if it's lowest victory point value, like I think, then they get that. And then the one does nothing. This is a combat where they take a zombie. Yeah, not sure if I'm doing this entirely right, but they do get two combat dice for next time. So there we go. They're not going to feel too bad. So I yeah, just leave a camp in the same spot. They didn't go anywhere. Let's get back to me. And um, I'm about to fight. I really want like two really high values. Let's reroll that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's better. All right. So I definitely want to go like hard coin and bread. Now, he just made a three-coin trade, so if I, like, jump it and do a trade, or I could just do five, but I feel like those three victory or four victory points from three is probably worth it. So, sure, let's, uh, let's make a trade, and then let's get two more coins back, so I'm going to end up with two. Yeah, so that locks this in before they can completely steal it. it gets me to ten bread. Let's uh, spend nine of it to get this guy out. Here, zoom out slightly, fit the whole tableau, so we only have one food left, and I'll use my free move... To go here, which gets me a zombie temporarily, but I'm about to kill him. With, let's use the rusty robot to make both of these fives into sixes. And then, that's doing 12 plus one per, oh, just plus one overall. That's right, the other card was one that, like, added one per deadly. So that's 13. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I thought they were all even. So I'll get the 12 and defeat the uh, zombie I would have gotten from that space. Nice. All right, so that was a zombie killing round. Slowed down a little bit, but did get a new spot. Let's try to maybe rush to the white tower next round. That was my seventh turn, by the way. And let's see what the bot's doing. Okay. They, wait, was that a five or a four? Well, I don't know. All right, so they got a pair of fives to make another trade. So that's four. Say they go there. Then they're moving one forward, one down. Just going to get them a fruit. They like that. Uh, they're going to try to fight. Need a six plus. They got it. So they'll kill a zombie in a second. And then they're going to draw for a high victory point value. Eight, eight, eight. Uh, I don't know if they have any deadly. I don't think they do, but that's a folk. Uh, none of them are machines. Uh, let's get for this one. Four plus shy. I don't think they have a lot of shy. I don't think I saw any. Okay, let's finish the other stuff they did. So they're going for the lowest zombie available, which is this one, because I already locked them out of that one. And they're camping here for another fruit. And then, hey, look, I remembered. <laughs> Things are going to slide down. Okay. All right, coming back to me. Remember, I want to book it this turn and also just get some coins, of course. That's fine. That's a good roll, actually. So let's put the one on the fish folk thief to get boom, all that. Uh, let's go ahead and take our free move, and then I need a hill move. So let's do the canyon wagon to also get a card. And no, don't think I care about that one. And then I need one more water. Oh, crud, water move. Hmm. Well, hold on, hold on. That guy can do the canyon move. So let's do uh, planes, uh, brown, blue. That'll work. Because, see, yeah, I wanted to go one, two, three. Boom. That'll get me three cards at the end of the turn. So hopefully I'll find something else that's machine-ish. Uh, what's the left? I want to get two more coins. So I have five. I could make a trade right now. The one I build up for like the eight, those are worth so many points. Now what do I do for the six? I don't want to move again. 
could draw two cards with a bounty hunter. It's kind of like getting two bread, but clearly better. Sure, because we still have uh, we have eight cards play. We can play four more in the coming rounds. So we'll dig for good stuff. Oh, man. Oh, man. So this one actually gives you another die, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. It's worth one point per giant. And I have three giants. So that's not too bad. And then, meh. Okay, so like, yeah, I'll consider that, although it's kind of late game to get another die. And then clearly I want that for eight. And that's also giant, though. So if I get both of them, if I can get 20 food, I'm going to make some big uh, coin trades. That's not impossible. But here, I'm about to get a lot more options with three more cards. Uh, who cares? Okay. It's a machine. Worth one, though. Moves really far. I definitely don't need that. Oh. I mean, I might as well play this, right? Because I get two per machine from the other guy. Maybe. <laughs> I really don't need these things. I mean, worst case, I can discard them for food to play those other cards that are even better for me. Okay, and Ea's got no combat dice, so let's roll a four. Ha ha ha, there we go. Uh, so they got that for making a trade. Let's do that first. Um, so lowest. Oh, I locked them out of that, so lowest would be here. They're making a lot of trades, but that's definitely going to get them a lot of victory points. Okay, and then three. Oh, you know, I've literally never got... That was, have I ne really not rolled a three for them? That's insane. So draw until you keep one card that matches an incomplete victory point set. I can draw up to six cards. If you have no incomplete sets, do nothing. So right now, they are looking for shy cards. Um, white towers, that doesn't matter. The Graskin, uh, ra Graskin Queen or Machine. So shy, Graskin, Queen, or Machine. And they just draw until they go six. So no, no. Oh, shy. Okay, so they get these guys. Oh, that's four victory points all by itself. That was pretty good. Okay, and then they try to do a combat and clearly fail and get a zombie. Again, I think I'm doing that right. Who the heck knows? And they gain a fruit. All right, cool. All right, that's their eighth turn to sit in the same space. We got four turns left. How far do I got to go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and four. Oh, so I just got to go an average of two a turn plus one. That should be pretty easy. All righty, let's get all our stuff back. Definitely want to go for a big coin trade this turn. Seems like a good roll. We'll keep that. All right, so let's do two coins from him, a coin and a bread from him. Gets me to eight, and oh, God, I got to use a five for this. But yeah, let's go ahead and trade in all eight coins. That is worth 14 points. Boom. Uh, and I get 10 bread. Oh, I didn't move these down. Darn it. Uh, you're gone. You're there. You're gone. You're gone. Okay. You know, it gets me to 13. Where's that thing? Yeah, what the hey? <laughs> let's go ahead and play the White Tower Stewards uh, with all of our huge amount of food, which gets us an immediate die for this round and for the rest of the game. Um, we got a four, and each turn I can add two to one die, so I can just make everything I have left a six. Wow. <laughs> with the Rusty Robot's help. All right, the only thing I really like one to one to play is the Machine Crawler, and I guess it's like, I might as well play that a cheap machine, maybe. What should I do right now? Um, I need to move some. Could also fight some zombies for free-ish victory points, like if I went there, there, because there's two more spots that are cheap enough. Although, there's already two spots in the way, so now nah, never mind. Let's just try to get as far as I can. So I've got a free planes movement, and then I can do another plane movement, and then it's a mountain. Let's do a mountain with a card draw, and I don't think I care about him. Sorry, not a mountain, a hill. And then there's another hill. I can just move my butt off, can't I? Yeah, so let's, uh, well, um... That's right, I forget. So let's say the free one was used for the hill. So that'll be two planes, two hill. I'll show you on the board. Which gets me whoosh, all the way to here. And I'm thinking next turn I'll just move a single one and like kill the zombie. Then the next turn maybe I go here. And then the next turn I go here, kill a zombie and move in. Like that would finish out my turns, I think. All right, so nothing special for that one. AI, you seem kind of useless. <laughs> I can already see the... Uh, the thoughts forming for my review. Okay, so they do move two forward, move two up, uh, and then they'll do all these. You're not going very far, are you, buddy? Okay, and then they take a zombie because they have no combat dice. Seems dumb. Uh, then they get a fruit, and they draw until they get the most expensive card. Or not the most expensive, most victory points. And one, eight, if nocturnal, or eight if magic. Do they have either of those? They do have one nocturnal, two, three magic, so not the magic one. Nocturnal, where'd you go? <laughs> there you are. Yeah, once again, they have no extra dice for combat. All right, six dice now. Wee! And I want to move one, kill some zombies, get more. Oh, wait, I got to move things down. Boom, boom. All right. Yeah, so I want to build up coins for one more big trade and also use that to, like, play that last machine, I think. That's actually a good roll. We'll keep that. So I want the, the high ones for the combat. Okay, so we need to move a single plane, so we'll do that for free. And that gets us a zombie we're about to kill. And I guess if we stay there, we get a fruit that I don't need. We could just keep moving, I guess. We'll see what I have for dice. All right, but I need to get to a 10 combat. So that's a 5, 
Um, oh no, that's a seven, <laughs> so 10, boom. That'll get the highest one I could have reached. All right, and then I wanna get food and coin, get two more coins. That engine takes care of itself. So I got two dice left. Do I move? I mean, huh, what are like the best things? Four plus defeated zombies. I already have that, so that guy's worth eight. So these are maybe like the 16 food. If I make a big trade, I'll get some of that. So maybe I just get more food and cards. So sure, let's do uh, two food here and two cards here. I think that's the best I can do to build up quickly. So I do have a ton of cards to discard now. Three victory points, three plus three with the Grasskin uh, Queen. So now still, these two are the ones. And how much? Gosh, I already have <laughs> seven food if I discard all those. And if I make a trade, yeah, I should be able to afford these pretty easily. I put a camp down here. I've got two more. And I get a fruit I don't really want. All right. And let's work on these guys. Uh, they did get a pair of fives for a trade, which means I guess, again, not sure if I'm doing that right, but maybe that. Okay, and they draw for something that matches, something they're going for. We didn't go for giant. What was it? It was uh, Nocturnal Shy Machine. Nocturnal Shy Machine or that one specific card. So that's one, uh, two, uh, three, four, shy. Okay. Uh, they get another negative zombie card, or token, I mean. And then, oh, they draw for the highest value. I mean, yeah, they're just going to have a lot of points from victory uh, cards, I think. So five, 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 eight, three if Nocturnal, three if Delver. Uh, let's go, if, um, do they have Delver? Oh, I see Delver on top. One Delver. Uh, just one. Yeah, I don't want to like get the Nocturnal thing to be too good, so let's go for that. All right, so no combat dice. All right, second to last turn, I just need to move and build up food. Here we go. That was, I mean, it might be okay. We have so much fruit. Yeah, you know what, whatever. <laughs> I don't think my dice honestly matter at this point. Wait, and once again, I did not do that. Okay, so I want to move like to this turn and then to the next turn and fight the zombies. So this turn I don't need to fight. So I need water, um, I guess this guy, and then the free one. That'll get me where I want to go. Oh, and it gets me a card as well. Minus five. Oh, because it's free and it gives you awesome combat. Yeah, we don't want that. Okay, let's do our thing. So that gets me a food and a coin. And that gets me two more coins. So what's that? That's six. But next turn, realistically, I can get... Oh, I forgot I could do three cards for a coin. So with that being the case, let's uh, let's actually go to seven, I think. So I'll just discard three of the cards I don't care about. Gets me to seven coins. I'll play them all. Oh, with here. We'll use my rusty robot to raise these two dice up to make the trade. Because I think between card draw and stuff, I can get to five next turn. But that gets me nine food now. Now it's going to spend it all on this guy, which means I still have four. I'm almost to that guy already. And I don't want to move anymore, right? So, <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, so that's going to be my 11th card. I can play one more card beside that guy. Well, let's draw some more to try to get something cool. Uh, no. And then, uh, I get this jeweler guy can get me a coin. Sure. Just to make sure I can get up to the uh, six coin biggest trade left to me at the end. Okay, and I'm camping here to get three more cards. Just looking for one more big thing. No, <laughs> no. 11 if no... Oh, that's weird. I didn't realize they reused some art. Uh, 11 if no folk. Yeah, just check. We definitely have folk. So that's a coin or some bread right there. Nothing else. All right. And... It did, whoa. Okay, that was some high rolling. Uh, they're making a trade, uh, which will be uh, that, I guess. Yeah, if the whole time they meant when they said lowest, like the most leftmost, then uh, they'll just have a few extra points from coins. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Um, they don't have a pair, so they're losing a combat, taking the zombie. So then, hey, they'll have some combat dice for next turn if they roll a four. And they're just sitting in this one spot, y'all. <laughs> you got to move. Can hang into the final turn. Um, I mean, yeah, they got bags. I got coins. Uh, let's try to go for that last zombie and get to the city. So I got to move twice. I got to use two dice for combat. And then the rest can go. Oh, I'm not going to have enough to get like coins and make the trade then. Maybe I will. Uh, we'll see how it works out. That's a good roll. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so what do I have to do? So I have to move on to planes and then move on to planes again, which uh, can be anything, right? <laughs> so sure, we'll do that. But when I move on to the planes, I'm going to kill a zombie. And then I'm going to get some coins and make a trade. Okay, that's all my dice. Let me actually work it all out. So I moved here. I got a zombie. I got up to like 12 combat, but I can only fit on the nine. So I kill the zombie. Then I moved again into the city. I'm getting a bread and three coins from all of them. And what's the highest coin spot available to me? Six. So I'll discard one, two, three, four, five. I want that six. 
So it'll give me two more coins. Then that let me make the trade for six coins, which plops me in on one of those, gets me eight more food. So I've got 13 food to play with. Definitely playing them. That leaves me with six food and one spot left. Uh... Oh, geez. I guess, yeah, the machine is going to be the worst the most. So that'll leave me with five food, but extra resources are worth nothing. So that'll be it. We got some extra bread and stuff and fruit left, but we're camped. This is, by the way, like a blessed run. I've not made it to the end in any of my other runs. And bot final turn. Don't think it matters very much. They did not get a double there. So they do move a little bit. Um, they, oh, they draw for something that matches. Folk Nocturnal Delver. I did give them a Delver thing. I don't think they got enough, though. Okay, they roll their combat dice, looking for a six. Hey, they got it. So they jump onto the same one that I did. And then they draw five, keeping the highest VP total, and that'll be that. Eight, if three plus magic. Dang it, I'm pretty sure that's going to be good for them. And all right, let's just calculate score. So we'll do mine first. It's pretty straightforward. I did reach Eastry. Um, I got the full 25. I never camped on the same spot, so that's 12. In terms of Ember Zombies, I got one, three, seven, twelve, eighteen. 12, 18 be a crazy score. Uh, market, I got, oh my God, 26, 36, 42, 46, 49, 51, 52. This is so much better than any score I've ever gotten before. Uh, card VP and treasures and zombies. That's I got minus one for the one zombie. I got two from the treasures. Card VP. Okay, I do have four plus machines, so eight, nine, two per machine. Let's come back to that one. <laughs> nine, uh, 12, 13, never camped on a lake. Yeah, I never did. So 13, nothing. I did defeat four plus zombies. So that's 21. One per giant. We'll come back to 23, 24, 23. Okay, then how many machines? So 23, 25, 27, 29, 31, 33. Jesus. 35, 37. And how many giants? Uh, 38, 39, 40, 41. Okay, not too bad. 154. I think my highest score before this was just over 100, so that's insane. Uh, let's see how the AI did. So mostly the bot to score is the same, which means it's going to be terrible. Okay, so they didn't reach East Tree. They got 6, 11 points for 4. And then spaces with camps. Oh, I forgot their last one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, Ember board and market. So that's 7, 8, uh, 15, 21, 27, 31, 34, 36, 37, 41. Sorry, that's uh, both together. Would have been higher, of course, if I was giving them gold sometimes. Instead, they would have blocked me a bit, but I don't know. I didn't get any treasures, but they also count fruit, and they get one point for fruit. They also get one point for white tower they camped on, which is two. So we'll make that six. Uh, they have <laughs> eight, eight ember zombies. So dumb. But now the big one this is going to take a second. How many card points do they get? All right, so I put all the ones that like care about things to the side. That's Delver, that's Giant, that's Nocturnal, Jesus. That's Chai, that's Per Folk, that's, uh, they did not camp on three White Towers, they only got to two. Uh, they didn't get the Grasskin Queen, one per machine, and a four plus machine. Okay, geez. Yeah, and they have a lot of these. So let's go one at a time. Did they get four Giants? One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's eight. Did they get three plus Delvers? One, two, no. Did they get three plus magic? Yeah, they actually have four. So that's another eight, 16. Okay, then one per machine. They only got one machine. Oh, wow. I mean, I guess I did pretty effectively steal all of them. Okay, eight, uh, three plus nocturnal. Nope, only one. Oh, no, two nocturnal, but still they don't get it. Four plus shy. Nope, they got three. Jeez. Okay, one per two folk. They get three points total for that, six folk. So they're at 20. They didn't get the white tower one. Four plus machine they didn't get. They didn't get the grass king and queen, so that's just four, eight, nothing. Yeah, so 28 if I did all that right. So 94 minus eight is 86. <laughs> I mean, that's a respectable score for how I've usually played the game. But yeah, uh, okay. Let me know if I've played anything wrong, but I definitely demolished them. I kind of got the perfect uh, combos going there. That was Creature Caravan. Uh, if I get to play more, I will let you know how I feel about it. There is, by the way, at least in the deluxe version they sent me, I'm not sure if this is in the basic version, a Wanderers expansion that has a different solo bot. So I might give that a try. It's like actually a different uh, board that has different things for each die and see if that's more challenging. Thanks for watching, everybody. And a special thank you to our biggest Patreon supporters, J. Willie MF, Steve Wren, Pedro Lucas, Nick Skeen, Miles, and Wayne Scott. Good gaming, and we'll see you at the next stop.